everyone, Amanda here. I have another book review, and that book review is going to be on The Gathering. Um, just I finished this book a while ago, but a friend of mine borrowed it from me, so I had to wait until he uh, returned it before I could do a review on it. Uh, I'm going to read a bit off of the back. <coughs> the cat had Daniel pinned face first to the ground. Daniel laid still, playing dead, as I kept shouting at the cougar and my parents shouted at me. The cat snarled again and I braced myself, ready to run if the powerful hind legs bunched for a fight. <coughs> Before he, but he made no move to come after me, just snarled and spat and stayed over Daniel. Rage boiled up in me. Maybe it was shock, but it felt like pure fury. I screamed at the, at the cat, looking him square in the eyes, and when I did, it was like everything else disappeared. The world seemed to dip and darken, and I, and I smelled the wet earth and thick must and fresh blood. The wind whipped past me, whipped past like I was running, running so fast the ground whizzed beneath me. The wind cut across my skin, exa ex exhilaration filled me. So that's the back of the book. Um... This book was slow to get into, not until page or not until chapter twenty five did it start to pick up, and that disappointed me a little bit because I'm rereading the um the uh, darkest powers series, and I found that the way she written those ones is the way that I like her writing, and this one has some of the same characters. I'm not going to tell you which characters are the same. But some of them are the same. Well, they got they get mentioned. Their names get mentioned, and that's pretty much about it that gets mentioned. Um, there's no actual physical form of them yet, but um, some of the same people are mentioned in this book that are mentioned in the Summoning, the Awakening, and the Reckoning. Um, I gave this book a four out of five, and I'll tell you my reasons. Or I'll tell you my reasons at the end and I'll read you my uh, review which I have written in my little book. <coughs> um, while I was reading the um, the prologue in the very first couple of pages um, Maya I think her name is yeah Maya sorry Maya loses her best friend and I could from the words that were written in it and from the images that were painted from her, from Kelly Armstrong's words, made me feel um, the fear of Maya and the fear of her best friend Serena, like from Sailor Moon. Um, she drowned. And I know I'm not spoiling anything because it happens from the first couple of pages, but. Uh, I had to put my book down after that, and as I was reading, I had to remind myself to keep breathing because it's in water, and I have a fear of water, so drownings in books make me really antsy and make me want to <sighs> panic. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't breathe, so I had to put the book down and remind myself to breathe that it, it was just a book and all that stuff. And, um, so, um... Before chapter 25, nothing really significant happens. It just her going about her day, her getting to know, or getting to know other characters in the story. Um, little tiny weird things happen that I'm not going to say anything about, but nothing like big significant. Like, oh, okay, now I know what's going to happen, or yeah, okay, this is what's going to happen next. It's more of like you can guess what's going to happen. But until like chapter 25 and on, it expl it, it tells you what happens. Like it tells you specific things, and it gives you more specific imagery, I guess. Um, in the book, the main character Maya has this strange connection with cougars and she has a strange connection with other animals and this weird ability 
to heal sick animals or injured animals. Um, but yeah, pretty much the rest of my review just goes on a lot about how the book is slow until you get to chapter 25, and I know I'm going to keep repeating that, but here's my review after chapter 25. Um, <coughs> You finally, finally get the backstory of Maya after page tw after chapter 25. Maya is adopted, and her parents in the book are not her real parents. But this guy named Rafe seems to know a lot more about Maya than Maya and her adopted parents know about Maya. If that makes any sense. And after chapter 25, Maya finally pulls all this story from Rafe together and, pi and pieces it all together. And then she figures out who her parents were, who, well, at least who her mother was and her father. And that she has a certain secret. She has, like, three secrets about who she, who she, like, who she is as a person. Not who she is as a supernatural. Um, um, another character in the book is the main character's best friend. So Maya's best friend, Daniel. He has lived a crappy, crappy life. Um, his mother left him, his father's a drunk beats him, yells at him, screams at him, blames everything on him, and it's just a crappy, crappy life. I can sort of relate to Daniel, not saying that my life was crappy or that my parents drank and my mom left me and, you know, all that bad stuff, but I found that I was more drawn to Daniel than I was to the main character. I could just sympathize with Poor, poor Daniel. Um, <coughs> um, a few chapters after chapter 25, it slows down a tiny bit again. But then near the end, the last like four or five chapters, it picks right up again. And it's like, bam, bam, bam. Everything happens. And there's new characters involved that you find out nothing about until you got to wait for the next book. Ah! hate when that happens. Um, um, there's a fire. They get shipped off in a helicopter. All the kids get shipped off in a helicopter. And then the book ends. I'm like, what? What? Oh. <sighs> I don't know. Books like that drive me crazy because I want to read books all together so that they're all so that I can get all the story. I hate reading them one at a time and waiting for a certain amount of time before I can get the next one. Like I didn't read the summoning, the awakening and the and the uh, reckoning until I had all three of them. And it took everything I had not to read the summoning. So yeah. I had I went out and bought the gathering I was so excited when I seen it on the bookshelf. I was like, oh my god! I grabbed it and I bought it and I was reading it. Uh, walking around the mall. I was reading it, walking to the bus. I read it on the bus and I read it when I was walking back home from the bus. So I pretty much had my nose in this book, like, for the, la for the next, like, two or three days. Because I was sick. So every once in a while I had to put the book down because my headache was just like, bah. But, uh, yeah, so four to five stars for this. Um, it only lost this one star because it was too slow at the beginning, unlike her other books where it's just like things start happening and you find things out right, of right, right away. And um, this one was really slow getting to the main plot and the main mystery in it and I didn't like that. So that's why it lost a star. Everything else was great, great characters, great storyline, great plot, just slow getting to it. But yeah, I recommend this book to anybody that liked The Summoning, The Awakening, and The Reckoning. Um, pick up this book and tell me what you think. I'll leave some links in the doobly-doo to my website, my Goodreads, 
and I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, anyway, bye.